Hi, my name is Brennan Tanzi, and I'm part of the Stealth Watch Labs team here at Lancope. In this video, we're going to talk about some of the recent developments around Zeus Game Over and CryptoLocker, and what we're doing with the Slick Threat Feed to help customers track down infections. So earlier this month, the United States Department of Justice made public a criminal complaint against who they called a leader of a tightly knit gang of cybercriminals based in Russia and Ukraine that is responsible for the development and operation of both the Game Over Zeus and CryptoLocker schemes. Additionally, they made public some of the details about steps they took to disrupt the operation of both Zeus Game Over and CryptoLocker. We'll go a bit more into what they did and what it means, but in order to make sense of it, it helps to know a bit about the types of malware. Zeus Game Over is a type of malware primarily used to harvest banking credentials. Although its functionality doesn't stop there, it's kind of what it's really become known for. Now, it's important to realize that there's a difference between plain Zeus and Zeus Game Over. Zeus was sold as a crimeware kit, which is basically a build-your-own botnet tool. This means that while Zeus was a particular type of malware, there were many different independently controlled Zeus-based botnets. Back in 2011, however, it was discovered that the source for Zeus was leaked, and shortly after that, Zeus Game Over was discovered. Unlike traditional Zeus, Game Over was not being sold as a kit, and all of the infections appeared to be controlled by the same group. The main difference here was the command and control structure, or C2. So here we're looking at two images from the declaration by the Department of Justice. On the left is the structure of a traditional C2 infrastructure, like the original Zeus malware used. And on the right is the structure that Game Over used. What's different here is the fact that, in addition to a centralized C2 infrastructure, Game Over bots are capable of talking to other bots to retrieve updates. This makes the entire infrastructure a lot more difficult to disrupt. In addition to Game Over, the DOJ also mentioned CryptoLocker in their criminal complaint and a disruption operation. We've already posted a different video going a bit further into detail about the mechanics of CryptoLocker and how to mitigate it using StealthWatch, so if you're interested in a more in-depth explanation, I encourage you to check out that video. The short version is that CryptoLocker is ransomware that encrypts particular file types on infected computers and demands a ransom to restore those files. So Operation Tovar, the disruption operation led by the US government, attempted to cripple the C2 infrastructures used by both Game Over and CryptoLocker. In both cases, the government and partners were able to make domains used by the matching malware inaccessible to the malware's controllers. In the case of CryptoLocker, making the domains inaccessible prevents new infections from actually beginning the encryption process, uh, but in the case of Game Over, a bit more needed to be done. In addition to making the domain names inaccessible to the malware controllers, the domains now point to government-controlled DNS servers. This allows the government to not only disrupt the DGA-based communication, but also attempt to poison future peer-to-peer -peer communication. All of this said, no arrests have actually been made yet. In addition, the UK's National Crime Agency warns the disruption provided by Operation Tovar may not last, and that users should utilize this window to clean up any infections before the disruption ends. So we've got specific solutions for both CryptoLocker and Game Over to help customers make great use of this window. We discuss our CryptoLocker Slick Threat Feed host group and DGAs more in depth in the last CryptoLocker video, and we're now pushing out something very similar for Game Over. This means that there are specific algorithms in both types of malware that determine exactly what C2 servers they'll try to reach out to. By incorporating the algorithms from both Zeus Game Over and CryptoLocker with Slick, we're able to cover all of the domains that the malware will attempt to reach. These threat feed host groups, combined with the visibility of Stealth Watch and actions of law enforcement, make existing infections very easy to spot. As of recording, the real C2 servers are being made unavailable by law enforcement. However, according to the UK's National Crime Agency, it's possible that the malware controllers will regain access to their bots. For that reason, we strongly suggest you take advantage of this window to find active infections and to remediate them before that happens. I hope that was helpful. This is Brandon Tanzi from StealthWatch Labs. Thanks for watching.